Well, thank you very much. I'm uh, delighted to be here, and uh, it's a great honor uh, to be invited to participate uh, in this uh, conference. Um, let me begin with the 7th of October. Um, I think those who planned the 7th of October uh, operation uh, thought it was going to be uh, a small one, a small operation, uh, intended to capture uh, a few Israeli soldiers in order to be exchanged afterwards in a prisoner swap deal. Uh, you already probably know that there are thousands of Palestinian men, women, and children who are held by the Israelis in detention camps, some of them without trial or charge, some for many years. So Hamas was under pressure from the Palestinian community to do something about this. And uh, of course, uh, there was a precedent to this. The most uh, famous uh, two ones were the mid-80s uh, operation by the PFLP, uh, which resulted in the exchange of a good number of Palestinian prisoners uh, for a few Israeli uh, ones. And then the Shalit so-called deal uh, in around 2011, uh, which brought about the release of uh, thousands of Palestinian prisoners in exchange for one Israeli soldier. Uh, Israel uh, doesn't care about uh, international law, doesn't care about uh, any conventions, and therefore uh, never bothered uh, to put on trial, proper trial, uh, in accordance with the Geneva Conventions at least, or to at least to, or to treat uh, humanely uh, the people it suspected uh, of whatever crimes and uh, held in uh, prison. So the only way to uh, help Palestinian prisoners and their families is to look for something like this. Capture some Israelis and then swap. Yet the operation turned to be much bigger than originally planned or expected. When uh, Hamas fighters arrived in the areas uh, that were part of Palestine until 1948, and uh, by the way, most of the residents of Gaza happened to be uh, original inhabitants of those parts of Palestine. They were driven out in 1948. When Hamas fighters arrived, they were astonished, probably pleasantly surprised, not to find any defense. Uh, there was a total Israeli collapse, and that led uh, to an influx of uh, the people of Gaza in their thousands into the original towns and villages of their ancestors. And actually, many of the Israeli uh, captives taken on that day were not taken by Hamas fighters, but by ordinary Gaza citizens. And that created a big embarrassment for the Israelis, and also uh, a predicament uh, for the Palestinians. You have planned uh, a measured operation, but it ends up being a huge one. Uh, the Hamas leaders uh, would have expected uh, an Israeli backlash, and a fierce one, uh, like the one we are seeing, because the current genocide that is exacted on the Palestinians has been going on since 1948, and even before, when the British were colonizing Palestine. Actually, Hamas military wing is named after uh, a Syrian uh, uh, scholar, Muslim scholar, as Zinin al qassam who arrived in Palestine to fight the British, because the British 
where the colonizers at the time, of course, you know from history that it was that British colonialism or British mandate, as they called it, uh, that paved the way for the creation of the Zionist uh, entity in Palestine. Now, the real surprising thing about the 7th of October is the global reverberations, the global consequences. And I don't think that any of us, uh, not least the uh, planners of the 7th of October operation, expected uh, what is going on today in the world of the young generation, men and women, students around the world, being joined even by elders uh, increasingly, uh, uh, protesting initially against uh, the Israeli war on Gaza, but eventually actually demanding a change to the current world order that is so unjust, so oppressive, so corrupt, that it allows entities like Israel to exact genocide on the Palestinians without being stopped or being questioned. And that's why on the 7th of October, there were at least a couple of analyses that were uh, very interesting that compared the 7th of October to the Tet Offensive in Vietnam. The Tet Offensive in Vietnam led to a major change in public opinion that eventually made the way for ending American uh, occupation of Vietnam. And the writers of these uh, two analyses expected that the 7th of October would eventually lead to an end of Zionism. Now, one of the things that happened as a result of the 7th of October is that many people around the world who today benefit from the end of monopoly uh, on information, because for many years uh, this monopoly was uh, exercised by so-called mainstream media, which is owned by governments or big uh, commercial interests. Now, because of the uh, parallel social media, uh, there, has, there, there have been outlets, independent, semi-independent, I would say, not completely independent, uh, outlets of information that people could rely on and also make use of to communicate news uh, to uh, one another. As a result of this, people started revisiting the history of Palestine. What is Hamas? What is this problem in Palestine that doesn't seem to go away? People started hearing or learning that uh, Israeli occupation had been going on for more than 75 years. That uh, so many massacres had been perpetrated and continue to be perpetrated. That the Zionists originally actually they didn't belong to the region and that's a very important piece of information that many people didn't uh, know. The sponsors of Israel, right from the start, misled much of the population of the world into believing that Israel was the just compensation for the victims of the Holocaust. And now people are asking, okay, where did the Holocaust take place? It took place in Germany. By who? By the Nazis. Against who? Against European Jews. Then why is Palestine being occupied? Why are the Palestinians being made to pay the cost for a crime that somebody else committed? And people started going back to the books of history. I remember uh, throughout uh, the 30 or 40 years of my lecturing in, in the UK that sometimes when I used to be invited by university students to talk about the history of Palestine, some of what I said seemed so weird, so shocking, that easily a student, a pro-Israel student, would stand in the room and say, oh, this man is a liar, this never happened. Now, my only challenge to them, to the students, is to say, go to the library. Go to the library and read. It's all there, it's all documented. And on one occasion, I said that the Iraqi, the Jews of Iraq, who happen to be the most ancient Jewish community on the face of the earth, were actually driven out of Iraq, not by the Arabs, not by the Muslims, 
but by the Mossad, by the, by the Haganah. It was a conspiracy has against them because Israel needed a population and so many Jews around the world were not yet convinced that Israel uh, represented them uh, and the, the Mossad sought to uh, drive the Jews, the Arab Jews or the Eastern Jews out of their homelands to come to Israel and two Jewish students in the hall stood and shouted at me, liar, liar and there came to my rescue a professor of history who said to the students, shame on you. What Dr. Tamimi is saying is, is, the, 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 is the truth, is the truth, and you should educate yourself about the history of the Jews of the region before you make such a uh, backlash. And actually, if you read, uh, for instance, the recent uh, a book by Avi Shreem, uh, a great uh, historian, actually he's one of the uh, three most famous uh, so-called uh, revisionist historians, or new historians, I should say. Uh, he explains how his own family was driven out of Iran. So you see, people started asking, what about religion? What is the role of religion in this conflict? Only to discover that actually religion is only used in one of two ways. It wasn't originally a religious conflict, because Jews, Christians, and Muslims lived for centuries no problem whatsoever across the region until the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. But religion, after the conflict started, started being used in two ways. From the Zionist point of view, religion was a, a useful tool to justify the occupation of Palestine, the dispossession of its people, the murdering of so many innocent Palestinians. They claimed God gave them the land, they claim to be God's chosen people, and if you are God's chosen people, then you have a license to do whatever you want. And he said, actually, they are liars. And you can read the book by John Rose, a brilliant uh, book. Uh, he was actually formerly a Zionist, but then renounced Zionism and became a supporter of Palestine. And he wrote a book called The Myths of Zionism, in which he proves that the founders of Zionism were actually all atheists and secular and were rejected by the Jewish communities across Europe. So these guys are liars right from the start. Israel has been lying, the Zionists have been lying. The whole thing has been based on lies and fabrications. Now the other way religion is used is the way Hamas is using this, uh, uh, Islam. In Islam, if you fight for a noble cause, if you fight in defense of your honor, of your wealth, of your country, of your homeland, and you get killed, you are a martyr. And if you are a, if you are a martyr, your sins are forgiven, unless you are, you've been unfair to people, because pe sins against people are not forgiven by God. Only sins against God are forgiven by God. Uh, then you end up in paradise. So people are encouraged on the basis of religious teachings to sacrifice themselves. And as such, you saw that after the uh, uh, so-called Islamic awakening across the Middle East, so many young men and women were recruited by the Islamic movement, Hamas included, and many of them are the fighters who eventually uh, carried out the operation uh, on the 7th of October. So religion can be a negative force or a positive force. And religion has always been misused across uh, throughout history. There's another brilliant book by Michael Pryor called The Bible and Colonialism, in which he shows how the Bible was used to justify colonialism and the, uh, the killing of entire nations. And he uses as three examples the uh, uh, European conquest of Latin America, of what is today the Americas, uh, the South African apartheid regime, and the Zionist project in Palestine. I think the 7th of October, I don't want to take much of your time, I probably just, uh, I'm, uh, uh, have, uh, uh, I hope that my, my statements to you will encourage you to go and probably read more about this, but what I would like to say is that what the 7th of October has done is that it has opened a window of opportunity for people to know the truth after so many years of misinformation and disinformation. Now, the Zionists are using this uh, massive brutal power 
in the hope of destroying Hamas and getting back their hostages. You see, now we are already in the seventh month. Seventh month, a very narrow piece of land, surrounded from all sides, under siege by the Egyptians and by the Israelis equally, conspired against by Arab governments as well as the sponsors of those Arab dictators that rule the Arab masses. And yet, Hamas is not defeated. And Hamas will not be defeated. And the Palestinian people are not defeated. And the Palestinian people will eventually be victorious. And I can see very clearly that we are at a turning point in history where we will see the end of Zionism coming very soon in the future. Thank you very much.